Hi guys, welcome back to Code Switch. Let's imagine a simple project. So in this project, we have schools. We have n number of schools over here, right? That means if you take one of the school, there are n number of students studying in that school. Let's take it one step ahead. When these students join the school, the school gives them an ID card. So each student has got an ID card, right? And also the school provides a way to learn these sub subjects. Each student can opt for two or more subjects. So that means we have n number of subjects over there. One of the student choose subject one and subject two, and another student choose subject two and subject three. So this is the scenario. of our project we have n number of schools and if we take one school that school contain n number of students and each student has got his own id card and each student can choose from the subjects right from the list of subjects available on that school now once we have a project structure like this before implementing that in the entity framework we need to understand the relationships between these entities So here the entities are school, student, ID card, and the subjects. Now let's see what are relationships. So there are three type of relationships in a database, or generally entities. There is a one-to-one -one relationship, there is a one-to-many relationships, and there is a many-to-many -many relationship. So one-to-one -one relationship means one entity is directly dependent on another entity. one to n or one to many relationship means one entity is dependent on a list of entities or an n number of entities this can be also thought in a reverse way there is a many to one relationship that means many entities are related to one entity now many to many means many entities are related to many entities right now let's see in our project let's find out these three kind of relationships now if we look at the students and the id card we can see a one to one entity relationship that means one student can only have one id card right and one id card can only belong to one student right so this is a one to one relationship now let's have a look at the schools so here we have n number of schools if we take one of the school that means one school can have n number of students that is a one to n relationship that is a one to many relationship but if you think from the perspective of the student that is a one to one relationship because from his perspective or in the reverse direction the student one student can only have one school but one school can have many students right now let's discuss about the last relationship that is a many to many relationship if you look at the relationship between the student and the subjects you could find that one student can have n number of subjects and one subject can have n number of students right here itself if we see the second subject that subject is used by two students and two students has been used by the same subject so that is a many to many relationship over here now in this video in this video we are going to cover these three steps how to install entity framework code how to set up the tables and relationships and how to run the migrations now there is a very important thing this video is a part of the three video series that helps you write quality code for the entity framework this is the first video now i highly recommend you to watch the second video that is the repository structure after you complete watching this video or you already know about setting up entity framework now in the second video what we are going to do is to put a repository structure to avoid the dependencies or coupling and to make the code more readable we put the repository structure above the entity framework entity core core structure that we created and once you complete that you can watch the third video or the final video that is a unit of work pattern which allows you to nicely create service based applications with very little code or with very readable code so let's have a look at 
our agendas. Okay, so let's start with the Entity Framework installation procedure. So here I have the NVC application. So in order to do the Entity part, I am going to create a new class library. So open a new project, search for class library, click on next. And here the main project is demo, so I am going to name it demo.data because this class library deals with the data part or the database part. Click on next, select the SDK.NET 6 preview, that's fine. Click on next. Alright, so we have set up the new project that handles the data. Now we need to install few nuggets. So let's open the nugget package manager. Now we need to install three nugget package managers. So let's search for entity framework code. So we need to install the base library of the entity framework code. So this is the base library of the entity framework code. Then we need to install the provider library. So here I am going to use SQL Server. So I can use the SQL Server provider library. So if you are going to use MySQL or Postgres, you can choose the specific version of the entity framework provider. So I am going to install the SQL, SQL library. Now in order to do the migrations, we need the tooling chain and that can be installed using this tooling nugget package. So let's install the tooling. Alright, now that we have installed all the required packages. The next step is to define the tables and relationships. For that, we can add a DB context class. So right click and create a new class. Name for our case, it is a school application. So let's name it school DB context. Let's make this class public. Now this class need to inherit from the DB context class that is coming from the entity framework core package. Import the. Okay, let's define a constructor. And now we need to override one of the method that is there on the DB context base class. So let's override the on configuring method and we need to pass an options builder. Here we need to pass the connection string of our database. So let's open our database. So this is the SQL server. I'm going to connect to it. So here the server name is this one and I'm using the Windows authentication so there is no password. And this school is our database. So if you open the tables there is no nothing. It's a plain database. So I have already defined the connection string for this. This is the connection string. It has the server name, it has the database name and it's a trusted connection true. That means it uses Windows authentication. So now let's paste the connection string over here. Now that we have successfully configured the SQL server. Now let's define the entities. So I'm going to create a new folder for the tables or the entities. And I'm going to add new classes. So first I'm going to add the school class, which is the school entity. And we can add the properties to this class let's make the class public and we can add the properties that we want so we are actually looking for the name the location the started year started year should be an integer all right and this school should have a key attribute because that is the primary key so i'm going to put the id as the primary key and specifying that entity framework use this key as the id or the primary key and i'm going to auto generate the primary key so it will be named one two three four wise accordingly based on the configuration so let's make it as an identity So 
so now we have successfully created the school entity now let's create the next one that is the student entity so we can copy down the already existing primary key implementation because that's the same over here as well now that we have set the primary key for the student now let's add the other property so we have done the changes now let's define the relationships so each school has a collection of students so let's make the collection as i collection of students so the property name should be students because it is a one to many relationship now let's take the second entity now each student has a school and has an id card so let's create the id card he has one id card and one school because it is a one to one relationship so it's a collection of subjects all right now let's take the id card entity now each id card has a student owner so let's mark it because it is a one to one relationship direction is important we will get into that later and each subject can have a list of students so it's a collection of students because it is a many to many relationship now let's define these entities with few properties on our db context class so we define the school we define the students we define the id cards and we define the subjects So now that we successfully configured the entity framework now let's move this schema into a database so for that we can run migrations so for that what you need to do is to first make sure the data project is the startup project and open the package manager console now in the package manager we can type in add migration so here we already select the demo dot data because that is the project where we have the entity framework installed so add migration let's call it initial migration the first schema that we are going to generate now here we got few errors so let's look at the error so here the error says id dot student and id dot card it was unable to map the one to one relationship because the direction is not specified this happens because we added both in directions but that's not possible so we can add a foreign key to resolve this so on the id card i change the student to student id so that there will be a backward relationship Now let's add the migration. Now once the migration is successful, we will get a migrations folder and a new class. So if you open the class, there will be two methods inside that. There is a up migration and there is a down migration. They are used to 
edit, modify and delete the schemas. Now that we have done the migration, but still we didn't generate any tables on our database. For that, we need to type in the new command that is update database command. The update database command will go through all migrations one by one in order and execute on the database. So let's type in update database. We successfully migrated the code to database. Now let's refresh the database. And we can see all the tables that we created. So this is how we do the migrations in entity framework code.